Hey, it's Andrea. And you know what? It's crab season in Northern California. And so we get a lot of Dungeness crabs here, but whether you have rock crabs or blue crabs or dungies, you should pick the crab meat yourself because you'll save money. You'll also get like the freshest tasting ones, especially if you cook them live. But you know, you can also purchase them. Make sure you get the heaviest crabs and the feistiest ones if you start from live ones. So let's like take the guy apart. Okay, so you're going to pick this crab and you need to get your equipment out first. I am a glove wearer because my skin over the years has gotten a little sensitive. And so wash your hands, dry them, or you won't be able to get those gloves on. You know, we all got a bunch of gloves during the pandemic, so here you're putting them to use. All right, so um, I get three bowls. So one bowl is for holding any kind of fungi juices, one bowl is for the meat, and one bowl is for the tamale or crab butter. I also got a, a bag for refuse if I want to uh, put it in directly there, um, as well as a nutcracker. All right, so, all right, here's our guy. Let's put him over. Should first remove the legs. And already some of the flesh is revealed. And at that point, I'm not a fool. I want to be careful. I'm going to take some of it out if it's possible. With the crab facing this way, I'm going to go from the rear, pull my hand right here, and then lift. And I have the crab body. These guys, spongy parts, throw them away. Put them in my bag. The juices here, um, are potentially, you know, good, but I'm just going to dump them out. What I'm really going for is this golden stuff here. If you are very sensitive to crustaceans, you may not uh, want to consume that. But I keep it for sauces, um, I freeze it if I'm not going to use it right away. I freeze it for my mother who absolutely loves this stuff for her Vietnamese Jazza fried imperial rolls. All right, so that's cleaned out. Put that aside. I'm going to take the gills out. it on the other side and this piece typically can come off pretty easily and then now I'm just going to break it in half and there's like some other stuff in here that um, you know you may or may not want to eat some people are okay with it there's like some little squiggly parts um, that is I believe called the vas deferens and it's okay to eat, but if you are ever, ever like questioning if it's something's edible or not, don't eat it. And um, all right, from here on in, you want to peel out anything that's not fleshy and start going at it with the meat. And clean it up. So my my tray here is because things can get really messy. So I'm just going to spin it around, right? And with gloves, it's really great to break things apart. And then now you're just going to take the flesh out. of the chambers in the crab body. And the great thing about wearing gloves is that you can really get a feel for things without things getting overly icky. 
just be gentle to pull out the flesh. you feel any of the hard bits, go ahead and leave them out. Whoops, this is the good stuff. And let's say you get stuck at a little point like this. What you wanna do is take one of the legs and then you can go ahead and pick. You don't need a seafood picker, you can just use the leg to do a lot of the work. Doing this yourself and not having the seafood monger clean the crab for you means that you get all the crab butter and there's very little waste. And once that, are, that you've cooked the crab, you want to or purchase one pre-cooked, you wanna like pick it as soon as you can because the flesh remaining inside of the shell can fester. Okay, we're coming near the end of the other half of the crab body. It's coming out pretty easily there. And it, you know, the inner chambers of the crab body just pretty much breaks easily. This is where your nutcracker comes in. I go all the way along there. And um, if it happens to come apart right away, I will deal with it. Otherwise, I'll just back and pick gently. Don't brush it too much because you don't want itty bitty bits of shell to deal with. Now you can crack all of them and then pick them or you can crack some of them. And pick them. Sometimes it's like a fishmonger does the cracking for you, they can be a little bit too harsh. So with their mallet and whatnot, so I would just rather do it myself. The prize pieces of the legs. You don't want to lose much of that flesh at all. Again, use our little guy here. Let's move some of this out of the way. It's okay if things get a little messy because you're gonna clean up afterwards. Be as thorough as possible to get all the flesh out of the chambers. You got a friend to pick the crab with you? All the better if you have some champagne or beer on hand. That always speeds things along. The claws are the funnest. this point, I go like this, take it out, and then pull out the flesh. Oftentimes, this is the perfect tool for digging out the meat. This is a really nice crab. third part of the big claw. getting towards the end of picking through the crab. And 
some things look a little messy, but you know what? It's, it's kind of a dirty job. And that's why I use a baking sheet that's rimmed. But look at that guy. That's beautiful. Can't wait to eat it. You're working for your food here. I would leave a big claw towards the end because they're the easiest. And oftentimes the most beautiful. Look at that. The fruits of your labor. You've got the meat and then you've got the crab butter, tamale. You are ready to store that stuff or to freeze it, but you can always eat a piece because that, you know, is the um, crab picker's bonus. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Hope you go on to pick a lot of crabs yourself and make wonderful dishes with it or just eat it on its own. <laughs>